Welcome to Keep the Hotel Empty. Today we've kept the hotel empty to welcome in singer, dancer, stylist, clothing designer, and most recently, event promoter and coordinator, Miss Alicia Gatto. Welcome, Alicia. Hi, how are you guys? Good, how are you? <laughs> Happy to be here. So, you are a lady of many hats. We've established that instantly. It kind of happened on its own. I didn't mean for it to, but... This is life. Uh, yeah. So let's rewind a little bit. Where, is the, where does the first hat come into play? Where are you at life when you figure you can sing or dance or any of it? Definitely dancing as a child. Dancing was first? Mm-hmm. Yes. And then, believe it or not, fashion came next. Uh, I was so into the runway models of the 90s, <laughs> like Cindy Crawford and all that. So I just got, like, super into fashion in high school, and I actually started styling, like doing free jobs for any photographers I could. So that came first. And then I'd start driving to LA and do free jobs. So believe it or not, the fashion came before the singing, even though my passion definitely, it it really is. Uh, oh, also, you know, writing has put, I wrote a ton of poetry throughout my childhood. So it all just matched so perfectly together to be a music artist. You know so I mean? how did the dancing start? What did you decide I needed to perform and that was just like the 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 road that was in front of you? No, my mom uh, put me in ballet because she kept seeing me dance, move the furniture and dance all over the house. She's like, okay, we got to put her in ballet. And I did ballet and they said I was really good at it. And then, you know, I kind of just was in and out of like jazz, tap, all those things, but believe it or not, I really didn't like choreography ever. So I kind of like I, I kind of stopped uh, in middle school, and I tried to be a cheerleader. That did not work. <laughs> <laughs> I, it didn't work for me. I didn't like it, and I didn't even make it. So like, I was like, okay, never mind. So then I really just I kind of just channeled fashion. Believe it or not, for high like from late eighth grade and loved music. Right, but got into uh, fashion, really. I, I worked really hard at it all through high school. At the In my senior year, I ha- ended up having my own clothing line, but it was, again, a luck thing because it was a uh, clothing designer in Orange County. I, was in, I went to Huntington Beach High School in Orange County, um, even though I'm from L.A., but I went to high school there. Um, and then I went right back to L.A. right after that. But I, he gave me a chance because his girlfriend had just dropped out right in mid-season. And he just saw my styling book and said, fuck it, I'm just going to let you do it. <laughs> so I just ran with it. And I, I still actually have the book today that has all of the designs that I did. It was like, like patent leather, cool, like, you know, pants. And sh- they were all patent leather. It was really cool. So was <laughs> It was that, called Luscious. Was that the first like real fashion gig you got? Yes. I mean, no, styling was. Cause I, but I worked for free to get my tear sheets. That's how you do it. Okay. Because they won't, you can't become a stylist until you have tear sheets. Okay, explain to me a little bit what that is. So you have to work with a higher up stylist for free mm-hmm. and you have to work for, a, do that a lot. And you have to get enough tear sheets being assistant stylist to put that in your book. What's a tear sheet? A tear sheet is a magazine, okay. like something in a magazine. Okay. Back then, there was a lot more magazines than there are now. Right. So it would be similar to now on, you know, some sort of photography or, or modeling agency Instagram, I guess, would be similar to. Gotcha. Yeah. But okay. back then, I mean, mo- modeling and styling was taken extremely seriously. It wasn't just like, oh, I'm a model or, you know, it was different, different days. <laughs> So how long did you do that for working for free and building up that that resume of tear sheets until you got okay. all of high school? Yep. And then um, when I got, the minute I graduated, I moved straight up to Hollywood, and my boyfriend at the time was in an agency for acting and uh, dance agent, and I and he was also in a band. Of and course. yeah, of course. Yeah. And so when I he, when he brought me in there, I was all you know. I used to just deck myself out. Back then, people could be so expressive and wear creepers and wear just like very flamboyant clothing. And right. they, this particular uh, agency was super like wanted cool people for like for commercials and, and stuff. So she, she was like, 
who's this? Oh, we got to get her in, in the agency. So, cause he brought me there purposely for that and it worked. So that's how I got all the music videos that I've been in. So how did that start? What was the, what was the day one of that? What was the first music video? Oh, first music video. I'm going to say, oh, I, it was probably a bunch of one hit wonders, the first ones, but I did end up getting Lenny Kravitz fly away. Um, Enrique Iglesias by Lamos, uh, Britney Spears. Um, and how long did you do it before you Janet started Jackson, landing those Go Deep. Gigs? I would say, believe it or not, it did not take long because the Latin explosion was happening. And I could pass for all, I'm Italian, but I could pass for Latin. So they were just putting girls out there to, to be background dancers. They had pros. They had choreographed. They had background freestyle. That's what I always did, background freestyle. And um, or, or for commercials, too. You know, I was in a it was called Mystic Beverage. It was similar to Snapple at the time. And mm-hmm. I was a dancer in that. So I'm trying to think like there's so many. But um, Janet Jackson, Go Deep. Britney Spears. What it was it just the opportunity with the agency that took you from the styling that you were doing and the fashion that you were doing at the end of no, high I school? No, I stopped to- doing the fashion after that. And then I got in a band. So it was like I got into the dan- dance and commercials and acting a little bit with this agent mm-hmm. and I Stop, I stop with the fashion. I mean, if people would ask me to do styling, I would style for my boyfriend's shoots for like his record label deal stuff for free because I was a cool girlfriend. And then also the other guys in the band would always be like, you need to dress more like so-and-so, which would be my boyfriend. Like the labels would say that to them. They're like, right, okay, right. Alicia's on it. Get her to do it. So I would just do it. But yeah, I let go of fashion because I was booking a lot of videos, commercials, and small, you know, background roles in film or television. So you were using the dance training you already had to do this? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because luckily they tried, you know, to put me into the— Oh, I was also in burlesque. I was started—I did do a rock and roll burlesque, kind of jazzy burlesque show called The Toledo Show for a while, too. That was very popular. Before you were doing the music videos? At the same time. Okay. Yeah. Because I was so into like, oh, well, now I've got to be get my dancer shoes back on. So I started, I was so in love with this band and the dancers. And he was like, you know, smoking with a saxophone and <laughs> stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, I need to be a part of this. And he was like, he let me do it. So I did try to get better at my choreography, but I had then met a guitar player and I started, you know, I was writing, I've always written tons of poetry throughout my whole life. And I was, I wanted to, I really wanted to sing and I didn't believe in myself. So I just, I just met up with this guitar player and he gave me some riffs to work with, and I wrote to them, and then I came to the rehearsal, and I pretended like I can do this. You know, I was really young. I was probably like 21 or something. So, you know, and then I was in that band for four years. So would you say that uh, the road that's led you to wearing so many of these hats is just one day you decided? Um, I just think, like, if you look at any singer, go to from Cher to Stevie Nicks to— pop stars like Lady Gaga, we have all those hats. You have to be able to write. You need to be able to write lyrics. You need to be able to construct songs. You need to have an eye for fashion. You need to know who you are. You know what I mean? Right. So I think why I fell so in love with being a music artist wasn't about being a singer. I have a cool tone. I do have to work at my singing. So, but why I loved it is because you could do so many things Mm. within being a singer. You could be an art director too, because you would, you know, tell the director, oh, I have this idea. And then you show, you know, they see your style. So it's like Gwen, like she, the way she's from Orange County and kind of from my neck of the woods. And uh, she did everything herself in her music videos in the beginning. She had her own style. So it's like the singers are essentially stylists and fashion designers, even if they're just cutting stuff up and making it work for the show, you know? So it was just a good, it was a a really convenient umbrella. It was just a perfect fit. Like when I saw, oh my God, I can sing. I didn't believe in myself in the beginning, 
But when I said, hey, you know, if I work at this, you know, like I have found on recording and producers have told me your tone is your own. Right. So we were, we went that direction. And yeah, you know, can I go out of key? Yeah, I can. But um, I'm not a loud singer either. I wish I was. Um, but I just worked with what I had. And also, I am such a natural born kind of promoter, uh, promoter, a salesperson, like, I, but really just what I believe in, like selling something I believe in. So do you remember at what point in your life you started to identify yourself as an extrovert? I, you know, I guess I never really thought about it until everyone was, was, I was this kid that was just so bubbly and happy. <laughs> like, I wish I still had that girl in me more. I try, but, you know, life can take you down a little bit. But, um, no, I think I really just, I was so such a happy little go lucky kid. I don't know that I even thought of, that I was an extrovert or an introvert. I think that only came to an understanding as I got older and became an adult and then realized that's what I'm saying. At what, at what point did you start to identify yourself as that and say, like, maybe my secret power is I, I am just, I can go out and do all these things. The belief in myself or like the, uh, the knowing that I'm an extrovert. Well, the being an extrovert is partly what makes you able to do all these things. It seems. So I'm wondering at what point it kind of dawns on you. Yo, I'm a, I'm a woman of the world out here. (laughs) I think I just was able to persuade a lot of people to doing things, but for one really major fact that I don't put my name or my, my passion or anything into anything unless I truly believe in it. So I'm not really selling anything. I'm actually just like selling something I believe in. So it's, I I always kind of think that's for a good cause because it's more for my friends' bands, you know, people that I love's bands, um, my band or the message behind like whatever it is that we're doing, or maybe the message behind the song or things like that, you know, like. So what were your big inspirations when you first started singing? What was the goal? Was it just to, just to sing and do it? Or did you say, I, did you have a goal? I want to be X type band out of the gate. Um, well, when I finally got I was in the band for four years, and at the fourth year, I actually went into the firm, which was a management company who did corn and chili peppers, and um, they also did a sector for actors with Cameron Diaz and, um, like, a ton of big names. And so I got meetings with them, and they didn't want my band, but they wanted me. Mm. And the band— was starting to, it was just basically me and the guitar player because the other guys were hired gigs, hired on guys because right, right. we wrote the songs. Um, and he was, beca- we, we were starting to bump heads a little bit at the end because we had a, a label come to watch a um, showcase that we had. So the record labels were coming to watch us. And my guitar player, I guess he was kind of getting mad that I was stealing the show a little bit. Mm, and Classic. Classic, yeah. And um, I still love him to this day, but he uh, he put only his picture on the CDs. And back then, CDs mattered. That's all we had. So he put his picture on the CD without me. And the labels were like, what is this? Like, it says uh. Lure. So the name of the band was Lure. And it just had him playing a guitar, a black and white picture, and it said Lure. And they were like, this is so unprofessional. Like, what? where's the girl? Right. So when I found out about that, and then I had them talk to me, and I was like, "What? why did you do that? So we ended up actually, I wasn't going to quit, but he had a very hot temper, and I just was like, all right, well, I'm actually the one that's getting asked to go to the firm. So, right. So then... At that point, it was, I was scared though. I was crying. I was upset. Like, I love people. Like if I've had long relationships, like I care, but he actually quit on me. So I was like, well, okay, well then I'm going to take this opportunity. So I did. And, uh, I kind of got in with them until 
The well, crash that right. we all know and love. What was overcoming that fear like? Were you, did you have to stick with it long or it was like, if I stick with this too long? I think I, it was like a breakup, you know, it was like four years. I, w- I was a kid. He was a lot older than me. Um, he gave me a chance. So I couldn't have ever become anything without him. Gotcha. So it, to me, just, you know what you go through when you're going through a breakup? That's what it felt like. But you still had to go perform well, and write songs? He didn't songs. even really want. Oh, yeah. So then I, my boyfriend, um, he had a really cool band. And there were a couple songs that they weren't using. So they gave those to me. And I recorded those and then gave them to um, the firm. But what ended up happening is they took me in, but they got it got shell. It broke my heart because I was like, I finally did it. Like, yeah. oh my God, everything I've ever wanted. I remember walking out of those doors and being like, oh. but they ended up the firm went inside out when Nabster, all of that stuff took that, you know, um hit. So it just got shelved and I got shelved. So um, so then I went into like kind of a depression for a while. Did not know. I was like, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Because I was like, that was my chance. You know, when you're young, you think that's all there is. Right, right, right. And then uh, I, my ex, the ex later that I had met was in the motion picture union. And uh, he said, I don't care. I'm going to be your manager. You're too talented. I'm not letting this go. So he quit his job to be my manager. And then we started Record Label. And then we, but we used it so that we could put mine on it. And so that it would kind of make it easier. I I don't know the the business side. He was really good at that. He Mm -hmm. had a degree in advertising. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of the talent of the part of the brain, and he was the, like, computer agent representation part and then advertising. So we did a campaign together, and it was called SaveAlicia.com, and it was about, like, I did this crazy video where my arms are behind my back, and I'm there, you know, I have handcuffs on, and I'm all dirty, and I'm, like, (laughs) in this weird you know, garage or something, and I, oh, and I'm, my I, my mouth is taped shut, and it's like something about like major labels, like save Alicia from the major label like scam. So that we were trying to be indie, smart, independent label. Yeah, so. yeah. So, what was your songwriting process like at that point? You were given tracks. Yes. So then I started working with Evanescence producer. He's done the Ting Tings. He's done um, Buck Cherry. All that he's done so many things, much more than that. I just can't remember it all. Yeah, it's always a long. Chris Johnson, list. he's one of the best producers, in my opinion, that I've ever worked with or known. Awesome, um, very good friend of mine too. So, I did some stuff with him. I also did worked with a guy Nine X, and he was a music producer. They both could play all instruments, and we. I would kind of tell them my, my style. Like I'd give them like other songs and parts and guitar sounds. And so I kind of stylized what I wanted and they created for me what they thought like I would love. So you were able to draw on the physical aesthetic that you knew to be a musical aesthetic. Yes. Like you can stylize the style of the music back then, especially it was really fun because if they believed in you as an artist, they would be like, this chick knows what, you know, has style. She gets it. And I kind of always saw what music was going to be cool kind of before it was. Mm-hmm. It was right ahead of the beat, mm-hmm. fashion-wise or musically. So I had that with, like, a lot of my—I I also worked with Fergie's producer in um, one of my songs, which is not on—it's not on—I have all my stuff on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, but I do not—this one song is locked in my computer, and it's such a beautiful song. It's, like, one of my best songs, and— uh I think we have like two songs together. And, it was and what do you think was different about that one? Um, what felt different while you were doing it? I was taught either the song that I wrote, I was talking about some personal things that I couldn't really tell my family. So I was like, 
I don't know. Just also that it, I couldn't. So the thing that's different about it is that if it was online, I wouldn't feel any different about it because it would be online. But what I mean is the world has never heard it before. Gotcha. So all of my songs have all different you know, meanings, but everybody can go back and hear them except for Lure, which I wish we could because whenever I meet up with new people who have heard my music, when mm-hmm. they hear, sometimes when they hear Lure, they like it better than they like Alicia Gatto as the um, solo artist. So, because my Lure band sounded kind of like um, Mazzy Star and kind of like oh, cool. a female perfect circle or it had a different vibe than... The other one was more polished. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like Trent Reznor meets, I don't know, like a dark Gwen or something. Yeah. It was it was kind of a weird thing that. And you did that for how long? Did what the, the your solo, solo stuff? Yeah. From, let me see, a long while. So four years in the band, and then I'm gonna. I'm gonna Eight years. Okay, so that's a good chunk. Yeah. And actually, I quit. At my my last gig, like big gig was House of Blues in 2011. Did you know that it was going to be your last gig? Mm, a little bit because I realized the music business in 2011, it wasn't getting better. Mm. And I had to keep paying the dancers and getting the costumes. And um, thank God I was lucky enough to have people that believed in me to give me these great gigs with great sound and stuff. But I had realized it was costing me so much for this hobby. It was almost like I was strung out on a dream, you know, like. Right. Like music was actually like my habit. Yep. in In a sense. So that's when I kind of. I, then I kind of soon later had a divorce with music. <laughs> I'll pretend I don't know what that's like. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so then what happens when the uh, post-divorce? So I said, oh, my God, I'm this age. What do I have to show for myself? Okay, so I have a resume. Okay, so. And you've built up quite a few skills by this point. Skills, yes, but they're artistic skills. And actually... And everyone will make jokes about me, and I make jokes about myself, about how terrible I am at the computer, and, like, I'm totally like a dinosaur. But, um, yeah, so there you go. They weren't those skills, and those are the skills that matter today. So I don't do well (laughs) with—I still don't. I still—I don't know. I just—I'm so good at these other things. It's just hard for me to get off of them. Right. And that's what I'm doing right now with Original Band Night, I think. I'm just kind of diving in to all the things that I'm good at and letting, you know, the community take whatever they can from all the skills that I have. It's been very overwhelming, but super rewarding and kind of putting me, kind of centering me actually. But also I do kind of go crazy every day as anyone would for a big event like this. Right. And I definitely want to get to that because this is kind of, this is kind of phase four almost as it were. How do you go or what's the road like once you decide you're going to start making music again? Because divorce didn't last. Well, I came to Sarasota uh, with my then boyfriend uh, and guy of four years, uh, guitar player of four years. And we created Gemstar for, for Sarasota, and we were originally, we were writing a bunch of stuff during the pandemic, but we never actually got good recordings of it, um, and then when we moved here, we're like, oh, shoot, like, he had a job, and I didn't, so I was like, you know what, let's just play music, and then I'd realized that to play music here, you had to get, you had to do covers to get paid. Right. So I'd never done that in my life, literally never done covers, barely done karaoke in my life. That's how— Because karaoke is the gateway drug for covers. I just was never good at it because yeah. I have my own voice. So it was, so it was actually like a, a, a boot camp singing, like, for me. Like for, it was like a boot camp to get my, my voice back. So as much as he hated it, um, the cover scene, and I don't— it's not my favorite, but like, 
it was fun for the moment or for the six months that we did it because right. it got me back up to speed a little bit. And I got to review the greats. Nice. You know, all because yeah, yeah. the music I picked were, you know, it was pretty, it was the greats, you know, so that's it. So then, and then now, then now I'm at another kind of stop. I'm at a quit phase with music at this moment because I don't have a producer or a musician to work with. So I'm, that's why I just kind of threw myself into this original band night because I do have a passion for us changing the scene out here and making original music or something interesting, whether it be the small entrepreneurial businesses, you know, right. uh, putting kind of letting everyone be seen and heard and know about each other and helping each other out or the fashion scene. I'm, I'm ready to do whatever anybody wants me to do, you know, so... But music, it's a big question mark right now. So I want to press rewind just a tiny bit. Explain to me a little bit about how COVID changed your journey and kind of got you here. Yes. Um, I had left L.A., went to Phoenix. So, and- but you started COVID time in California. No. I no. actually—so I, I was— I moved to Phoenix in, like, 2017, and because I was like, I've got to, like, my mom's right. i got to do something, like, with my life or my money or whatever. So I I got um, a condo and was trying to maybe figure out a business to start. I'd saved a bunch of money for many years and kind of— you know, I, I, the places I always picked were pretty cheap. I lived pretty meagerly, so I always just kind of put away. And then um, in during 2020, I was like, I called it Project Upgrade the Cage because <laughs> I just thought, oh, my God, all the things that I thought were going to happen are happening, and I kind of freaked <laughs> out, kind of like Armageddon or whatever. So. Yeah, I think, I think some, a lot of people did that. <laughs> So I upgraded the cage and I sold that place and then I went back to California. But I did not go to Southern California. I went to Sacramento, believe it or not, because that's where the family members were and uh, bought a house there. And it just turned into this flipping for survival process. So I went, you know, I had because the 2017 to 220 or 2020 move, things went a lot higher, you know, in yeah, yeah, equity yeah. and stuff. Right. So that's it. So then there, and then I went to Miami. What pushed you out of California? <sighs> California, especially near the Bay Area. So everybody was kind of moving out. There was an exodus out of the Bay Area. So they were kind of, people were moving into, uh, everyone was thinking Project Upgrade the Cage. I think they were like, you can't, they were in rooms, like, and they were, if you're in apartments there, you just couldn't move. And then if you went downstairs, there's just homeless people everywhere. So it was like, and it's cold. Um, so it was very different for me than what I was used to about California. But I thought, oh, well, I don't have to go back to Southern California, but I'll enjoy the nature in Northern California. But uh, the way that the, the, the rules were so strict— People were so they were didn't handle it at all the way that Florida handled things. So I just felt I I, I was like I can't live here. So then I, I left and I went to Miami on a New Year's and it was <laughs> so free and it was beautiful and it was actually cooler than Miami typically is because it was the lockdown. Right. So I had kind of saw Miami through rose colored glasses, but it was then I ended up getting a place there for a year. And then I was like, okay, I need to like take the money that I have and buy a house. And that's when I came here. That's when you start to discover the scene around here. Yeah. Once I moved in and I was like scoping out the town and going like, well, what am I going to do here? Like, what can I do here? Like it, it was never a thing to try to uh, come in and like, you know, direct the town. I just was trying to think like what good, like what could I do to, to like be of service really is really how I thought of it. Um, but I'm a big personality, so I know that out here things could be taken differently. <laughs> this is true. And I'm kind of a peacock, so I'm very like, you know, I dress crazy and I'm, I dress like I'm at a show every day. So <laughs> nothing wrong with that. No, I know. 
So then when does it dawn on you that you want to start becoming more of an advocate for the community? What's the first thing that you did there? Well, when I had realized that I didn't want to, we couldn't do Gemstar, the the uh, cover band anymore, because Nick wasn't willing. And also just, we wanted to get back to our original songs. Right. So I just, when he said, I don't want to do that anymore, I said, okay, let's focus on the original songs. So I did, but then he ended up uh, making a decision to go back to California. And then when he just made that decision, I said, well, okay, I don't have my guitar player, so what can I do? So I kept going like, I know what I can't do, so what can I do? So I just started to like look at all the bands and start promote. Like I started just, you know, taking video and pictures and posting them. And then I kind of like realized like, wow, this, I could do Gemstar PR, like not Gemstar Band. And I'm keeping Gemstar Band because I'm hoping that someday I still will have Gemstar Band. But Gemstar PR is what I'm currently doing. And I just, I felt like, well, let's, you know, shed some light on like the cool, unique people that are here, like that are artists in all ways from fine art to uh, the original music scene and artisans and like, uh, you know, fashion designers or jewelry designers or all of those things. So what was the first thing you promoted here? How did you, how did you get into that water? Went to as many, as many like shows as I could. Um, a lot of them started out actually with like the uh, cover scene because I didn't really know where to go. And that's all I kind of saw in my media. And then I started to go, oh, wait, there's these original. I finally kind of figured out where the original bands are. And then I would start going. And then I started making friends kind of with a, a couple of the main people here, mm -hmm. which would be Lisa Silvermore and Physical Plant. They have been such... They've been so amazing to work with and so supportive, and uh, I, I support them as well, and they're my favorite people. Um, and, you know, then I worked with Miambra. I worked with a lot, of, a couple of the singer-songwriters. When I did one singer-songwriter show out here, I promoted it, and uh, I kind of got to know a little bit of people. Just go to going to Oscura, because that's pretty much our only— Shout out, Ben. Original. Shout out, Ascura. Yeah, shout out, Ascura. Um, and then this bold thing. Uh, yeah, talk to me about that. You got an event coming up. It'll be a week from, well, it'll be seven days, six days from the airing of this episode. You're going to do an original band night. This is your first original band night, right? It's on the uh, January 27th. Is that six days away? It will be when we air this. Oh, I see. Yeah, because okay. it'll air next Sunday. You made me nervous. <laughs> no, no, your clock's not ticking that bad. <laughs> So how does that come to pass? So um, actually, I had gone to Marketing on Main and been doing PR for that. Um, I just kind of was still in the PR mode and kind of shooting everybody in town, going to every event I could. And I, and I looked at the place, and Lisa was like, I, I, you know, the iHeartRadio room. She goes, I've always wanted to play in there. And I said, okay, well— and you were just there on a whim or something? There yeah, was no, another was event there. going on there? Yeah, there was a different event going on, and I was doing PR for it. Gotcha. And it was called Marketing on Main um, with Gianna Kramer. She's an awesome—she's a real event planner, okay? Like, mm. I'm a rookie compared to her. Yeah, yeah. But, um, and then uh, I, I said, well, I kind of know Tom. I could probably ask him, and that's—you know, he owns Motoneco Cafe in the Bold Building, and— uh, part of Bold as well. So I reached out to him and he said, yeah, that sounds cool. He's like, I'd love to get more exposure for Bold and Motoneco. Very cool for them to support that too. Yes. Yes. So, you know, fine, you know, then it's kind of like all the stars were aligned. Um, and then I wanted to give a shout out to Lux at Bold because she has been such a sweetheart to help me with all the little loose ends because to do this by myself has definitely, I've actually done a lot of, a lot of things in, within these genres that I'm doing, but not all at once and in one day. 
So it is quite overwhelming because it's a very big space. But What are some of the things that you're finding that you needed to now learn to get good at in your pantheon of skill sets? What have you had to add now doing this new thing? I will tell you what I need to learn, what I have still not learned and I want to get better at. I'm used to being the artist, not the one who manages uh, the business aspect or the people um, that I'm uh, like, let's say the, uh, you know, the the people you hire to work with, like, you know, photographers or this or that. Um, I would love to to become better at um, just speaking speaking in a better way, like via text and just not getting nervous and not getting, you know, not getting so, I'm not used, it's very overwhelming. Like I said, I'm this used to is a new thing. the talent. Yeah. That's the new thing is, you know, cause I, I didn't mean to pick a place that had so much, but the space was calling. And since I am a fashion designer and I do have a clothing line that was sitting in, in my fashion room waiting to be seen, I couldn't say no to that when this opportunity came up. So tell me a little bit about what so much is, because I know there's a lot going on this night. Tell me a little bit about it. Okay, so it's called Original Band Night. It's at the Bold Building, and the uh, the bands will be playing in the iHeartRadio room. Treatum is also another band I want to make a big shout-out for. Yasin, the singer, Bruce, all you guys. Um... They are going to be the first band, and they have the coolest vibe. So right when you walk in the door, you're just going to be feeling these cool vibes, and uh, or when you walk right out of the elevator, I should say. And then um, Lux will be at the bar, and then there's going to be a fashion show um, that'll ab- around 8.30, 8.45. And what and- are you going to feature in the fashion show? Uh, my clothing brand, which is called Got to Have Her. Uh, even though I'm, I'm maybe thinking to call it Gemstar, something to do with Gemstar, because I just put, uh, I have a brand new one that I made just for this show, and it has gem and stars all over the hoodie and the back. So I'm debating on keeping, got to have her, uh, as was the name, because my last name is G-A-T-T-O, Gato. So I thought got to have her was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see. So um, it'll be my brand. It will be uh, Anna Molinari Boutique. It will be uh, Shop Surge. So it's Surge Boutique downtown. And uh, we're also, I'm going to be, I'm I'm a firm believer in uh, recycled fashion and uh, like vintage. And so I'm going to have a couple of those pieces as well as Brandon Thrift is going to bring his fashion pieces. And I gave him two jackets of mine with prime real estate to uh, paint. So we're going to have him doing fashion, which... So you have men and women fashion. Oh, yes. There's going to be male models. It's actually going to be a lot of male, maybe about five male models and uh, maybe like 10 female models with all these different brands that I just said. And then when we're done with the fashion show, we will go into the iHeartRadio room and all three bands will play. And it will be Physical Plant, Lisa Silvermore, and Miambra. Very cool. So what do you think that the future holds? Are you going to are you gonna event plan number two or are you leaving this door open? I'm going to leave the door open because I am about to go to barber school um, because I used to kind of as a stylist, cut hair on the set a little bit. So I kind of wanted a real, I want a little bit of a dependable, reliable job. I haven't had that in a long time. So I'm going to kind of go that direction. Artist life. Yes. What's a dependable job? It's not. And I need, I kind of don't want the financial volatility anymore. So I wanted something a little stable. And then I would love, I will, I will always do PR for my friends, for anything I believe in, whether it's a business, um, an artisan, a uh, anything small business, anything not corporate that I believe in, I will keep doing PR just for the sheer passion of it for free as a gift as always because that's just who I am. But um, as far as the events go, I'm not sure because, again, I'm not as computer savvy as I'd like to be. So looking for computer assistance out there. <laughs> But anyways, no. Other than that, I'm just going to kind of see where it goes. Because this passion is the driving force for you, it seems like. 
I just feel like I've gotten to have my dream kind of already. Mm-hmm. And I, believe me, I'd love to do music again and do, you know, fashion shoots for my, you know, whatever it is uh, that I'm doing. But it's not about like a narcissistic kind of idea right now. I feel like I had my turn and I kind of just think there's young, amazing talent out there that needs to be kind of brought to light, you know? But you're generally passionate regardless of what you're talking or or into because you had the same thing with the activism that you've been a part of, correct? Yes. Yep. Ah, you know that. Um, Yeah, I was an animal activist for a very long time in L.A. alongside with me being a singer because just being a singer and watch me, look at me, look at me was not – that didn't feel right to me. So I wanted to kind of use myself as a spokesperson and or – sponsor and kind of donating my time. And I did, I actually did UCLA uh, progress. I worked with progress for science and it was uh, anti-vivisection, which means uh, against, you know, animal testing and the way that animals are treated in those uh, conditions and anything that has to do with animal testing because the things that they do to these guys and believe me I'm a I love I'm an animal activist in every way so it's not just that that was kind of my biggest passion because I kind of looked at all the the evils and I would say that one they are in the most sheer torture than even more than factory farming is horrific but this is even a step worse so I kind of just went for the one that I felt the most passionate about who or how did you become passionate like this? Did someone exemplify this to you as a kid or you've just no. been burning from day one? I've been, my parents have told me that I've been like an animal lover since I came out of the womb. And my like mom was a dog, like she loved dogs and stuff. But for sure, like the animal activism came from me as a kid. Like I actually always hated fireworks, even as a child. And I was like, that's not cool to the birds or the animals that are barking right now and they're scared right. or the pollution that's that's making it go into the water. Mm-hmm. So I was a weird kid. I've always <laughs> kind of just been like, this isn't right. Or like, why are we using animals when they're not even us? So you've always had strong feelings about whatever it is you were feeling about. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, for sure. Right. If I feel like something is awesome like it does not have to just do with me. It can be someone else's band. It could be someone's clothing brand. It could be someone's jewelry brand. It could be a small business, like a, a, a restaurant that a chef who's by, you know, like Boulevard here. She's another one that she's doing it all by herself. And it's a very little cafe. And I did some promotion for her for free. Like I just do that. I'll just promote anyone that I feel like deserves it and is doing a good job, because why not? Good question. (laughs) So what do you think makes a good promoter? It's just being able to share your passion genuinely? Because I know you don't fancy yourself much of a salesman. You can share your excitement. what What do you think makes you good at that? Probably just loving people and wanting to meet new people all the time and just going like, wow, like when someone does something out of the norm or above average, I'm just like, oh, I see you. Like I see you. And if there, if I can use my gift in any way to like help, you know, like I have the gift of gab and I'm always (laughs) kind of all over the place, you know, and I'm kind of colorful. So people kind of go like, who is she? What's going on? So I just, I don't know. I just kind of spread the word, I guess that would be the right way to say it. Awesome. Well, I know Original Band Night's January 27th. I know you're taking on a ton of it on your own with a little help on the side, and it's been overwhelming, understandably so. So we can get you out of here on something fun. Yay. If you could stylize one person, living or dead, in any way, who would it be, and what would you dress them up like? Living or dead, living or dead. Is Cher too easy of an answer? I mean, she d- she styles herself. I don't. I couldn't do a better job than she did. I'm a- just saying. A- amen. So hold on. Let me think. No, there's got to be. Um, I know. My favorite singer, current singer, Fantagram. The, the, her name is... Um, Sarah. Yeah, Sarah. What is her last name? That I don't know. Um, I can't believe I don't know this. I don't, I've been spacing on the most, like, dumb things right now. 
But yeah, Fantagram is one of my favorite bands, and I'd love to style her because I feel like I could even zhuzh her up even a little more. <laughs> I like to go go all the way. Full zhuzh. <laughs> yes. Full zhuzh or no yeah. zhuzh. Yes. Balls to the wall. Awesome. Well, I look very much forward to your event. I really appreciated getting to hear from you, and I look forward to maybe doing this again sometime. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so Alicia. much, Eric. Thank you. <laughs>